Ladies and gentlemen, this is What's Next Kentucky Radio. You are listening to WLXU 93.9 FM, the voice of the people. I'm here with yet another great episode and a great guest to come on our show. I'm, I'm, I'm so excited to have you on, Sean. Ladies and gents, you are listening to Sean, Sean Smith from Sources Say Podcast, from GoBigBlueCountry.com, and last but not least, the assistant coach of the Frederick Douglass High School basketball team. Welcome to the show, my man. Hey, thanks for having me. <laughs> that uh, that list of intro, it just gets longer and longer. <laughs> That's good. And That's a good thing. People, people that see me at these games now this year, they're like, how do you do all the things that you do? But it's uh, it's it's very rewarding from for all sure. aspects of it. For sure, man. I, uh, I know you're you, grown up in Middlesbrough, Kentucky, from Kentucky, local guy, um, decided to stick around, you know, for, for the adult years and everything like that. Talk to me about, you know, obviously, you know, living in Kentucky, you have to be a basketball fan, regardless of if you're a Louisville fan or if you're a Kentucky fan, you got to be a basketball fan. You got to choose. How has just being here in the state of Kentucky, growing up here in the state of Kentucky, how has it influenced your life today? My my dad handed me a basketball when I was four years old. And from that day on, basketball has been my entire life. And uh, Kentucky basketball was my entire life. And just growing up watching those teams, so I'm 34 years old, late 90s, into the 2000s, John Calipari era, I've got, I've got to see it all. Oh, and, late night, untouchables. Yeah, untouchables. <laughs> and, and, and growing up, and I, I used to be the kid that would uh, watch Kentucky the night before, and I'd go out in the driveway the next day after school, and, and I would just reenact every moment from that's the game. Yeah. And I think that's kind of helped me kind of get a feel for the game, too, because yeah. like I, I would – I could just remember everything that happened, every big play. And here I would be Wayne Turner as a kid and make a spin move and shoot a floater <laughs> in the lane and and stuff. But, uh, no, just growing up in this state, you got to love basketball. For sure. And that has fueled me to be who I am today, just handing me a basketball at four years old and then pairing it with Kentucky basketball. It was a match made in heaven. Your basketball is very – you're tied very close to the game of basketball. You're, you're coaching. Um, you, you've been coaching for 12 years now, which is – it was a very long time. A lot of middle school coaching, you know, and high school coaching as well. Um, but that comes with a lot of experience that you've that you've gotten, you know, um, you've gotten over the years. So I really want to ask you, Sean, like, what, what is something that really has shocked you um, from from a coach's coach's perspective? You know, before you got into coaching, um, you, you might not have known, but you when, once you got in, what is something that has really shocked you? Honestly. It's it's the the different age levels that I've coached. Yep. I've coached kids as young as fourth grade, now all the way up to seniors in high school. And the one common denominator between them all, they just want you to love them. Mm-hmm. And to me, that has been probably the, the 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 gift that I have the best when it comes to to coaching. Is it, it I'm able to build relationships, and relationships they they may be different with a fifth, sixth, seventh grade kid as they are with a sophomore, junior, senior, but at the root of it, it's all the same. Mm-hmm. If you are good to a kid, and you and they know that you have, you can they can trust you. They'll do anything you ask them to. Absolutely. So building that trust, it starts with morning workouts, showing up at six six fifteen in the morning with these guys, getting in the gym. When I got this job, in the spring, I was meeting Coach Fee with some guys early in the morning, and I wanted to get to know these guys on a, on a personal, personal level, level. Personal level. Giving yeah. them rides to, to games, picking them up from practice, or taking them to practice, taking them home from practice, just any way to build relationships because, listen, you can't go through the fire unless someone trusts you. No, absolutely. And absolutely. building that level of trust, that it, I think that's something that I've done over the course of 12 years is I, I've really been able to get kids to trust me and know that I have their best interests at heart. Am, am I going to get on them? Am I hard on them? Absolutely. Yeah. But at the root of it, they, they know that I love them, and I've never been I've never been afraid to tell my players that I love them. That's good. Every that's, single that's day. Awesome. That's awesome. And not a lot of coaches are like that, though. You got coaches who, you know, are a little bit, you know, a little bit distant from their players. You know, they just want to stick to X's and O's. And, you know, you have that those coaches, and that, that may be their style of coaching. But I, lo- I love the way that you're you're very in tune with your players. You like to develop the relationship with the players, and it's more personable. That way they yeah. can trust you, like you said. So, you know, I tip my hat off to you for doing that. Um, I, I really want to get into the, the aspects of, the I guess, the rewarding factor of it for you. Because coaching is one thing. Yes, you want to give back to the community. You want to continue, you know, to teach people about basketball. But what has been really the most rewarding factor of your coaching tenure for for 12 years now? 
It's it's not as much here now, but it, it's kind of happened back home. Is I started coaching when I was 19 years old. Wow. And I coached kids that were – so I played high school basketball with kids okay. that I coached. Okay. So that was a really weird dynamic. Is that, that, is, that is so, weird. <laughs> so I'm, I'm going from being your teammate to the next year I'm on you about not setting a good screen or taking a bad shot. And that was kind of a, why are you yelling at me? We're, we're friends. Yep. And like, So that, that put me in it early. <laughs> we're friends. But then, <laughs> but then as I'm 20, 21, 22 and becoming a head coach for the first time, I, you know, I, had some, I had kids that were 12, 13, 14 years old. And now I look back and when they see me out somewhere, yeah. They they come up and there there was one kid specifically who quit my basketball team as an eighth grader. Really? Just just quit. And he came back to me about six or seven years later and he said, You had one of the biggest impacts on my life. life. Even though this I is, didn't this finish, is like six years later. Yeah, okay, even, okay. Even though I didn't finish it out with you, I want you to know that you made a difference. That's awesome. And he said his biggest regret was not listening to me and not sticking <laughs> it out. We're playing at Scott County in the Billy Hicks Classic earlier this year, and I look up and that guy is sitting behind my bench. Oh my goodness! Supporting me. That's impact, and that's a kid man. that quit. So then it made me realize that what we do is significantly important, but how we do it is even more important. Right. No, no, I, I totally agree, man. What a story. What a story. I mean, the kid comes back, um, he quit, and then you see him. I, I guess you weren't even expecting that. Like, like when you quit, and then when he comes back six, seven years later, it's like, wow. Like, that has to be a life-changing moment for you. I want you, you, you talked about the classic that Frederick Douglass High School has played in. Uh, talk about a little bit about Frederick Douglass High School basketball team. I mean, they're, they've, they're known to be a dominant program here in Lexington, Kentucky, not even only in Lexington, but the state. You know, they've, they've won state championships and stuff like that. But I want to I really get into uh, the aspect of, you know, you know what is the – what are we looking at in terms of talent, in terms of, you know, the Frederick Douglass High School basketball team? There's a lot of guys who – there's some ballers they got on yeah, there. I, I got a chance to check them out. Yeah, there's there's some D1 talent for sure on our roster. The, the biggest thing that I had to get used to is back home we're throwing bounce passes. Up here we throw lobs. So it's uh, <laughs> a, 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 bounce, a bounce pass. No, you, you're, not, <laughs> you're, you're not throwing bounce passes here. You throw that thing at the rim and, and let one of those you got guys some athletes. go get it. But we, we've got a great roster. We've got a great group of kids that, that want to get better. That, and the, the thing about them the most is they're so competitive. They want to win. And sometimes it's a, it's a going at each other thing. And when, when one's not giving their best, you've got 13 or 14 other guys that's going to demand it out of the one. So it's either you get on board or you get out. And that's kind of been the culture that's there, and everyone's on the same page. But we've got a great group of guys. Uh, you know, Armello Boone just picked up an offer from Western Kentucky. He's having a really great run right now. Avion Chenault, an unreal athlete. Half man, uh, half amazing. Yeah, football star, uh, big-time <laughs> offers. But uh, to me, can can play both sports collegiately at the D1 level. He, he's just, he can play basketball. He can play football. DeMarcus Surratt, uh, a young yeah. sophomore who's – Coming into his own, missed some time. He's uh, a sophomore, wow. Yeah, he's a sophomore. Missed some time with an illness earlier in the year, but is getting his feet back underneath him. Uh, we got some good young kids, too, uh, on my JV group that are really committed to, to seeing this thing out and becoming very solid role players in our program. And from top to bottom, every guy is very important to our program. And it's been a very rewarding transition here. To, to And it's it's been different to coach guys that are that good at the game and, and see it. You can do some things here that I couldn't do you can in the do past. Win back. Yes, man. <laughs> I get it. I totally get it, man. What What are the practice atmospheres like? You You talked about how competitive these guys are. We know in practice they're going at it. What is that like for for you, just being at, as a, from a coach's perspective? What does it look like? It's It's good, and and they, they're still kids, <laughs> so they still do the things that drive you insane and drive you crazy. Like I said, those those common denominators there from fifth grade all the way through ninth, tenth, eleventh, twelfth grade. It doesn't matter. But to, to me, it's the competitive edge that they have. Wow. It's the competitiveness that they have with each other that then carries over to the game. And, and to me, when the lights are on, I don't know if, I, if there's another group out there that shows up and performs better than this group in, in the broadest of moments. And when we're at full strength this year, we, we've shown it. We've been able to go onto that, that stage and that platform. And uh, we, beat a Saint, we beat St. Francis, a prep, a prep school out of Baltimore, Maryland, earlier in the year in the season opener, a really well-recognized and respected prep school and one of our better performances. We're finally coming together here. We've been going on a, on a good stretch of games and Getting a healthy. good stretch of performances. Yeah, yeah. We're healthy. And uh, I, th I think we're really starting to turn a corner here and, and try to make a run when it, when it matters most. 
For sure. Now, you and Coach Harris um, over there at Frederick Douglass High School, very unique relationship that you guys uh, have. Um, I, I want to really ask you, how has that relationship, how has it developed? What, what's so unique about you and Coach's Har Coach Harris's relationship? The, the thing I'll say about our entire staff is we all complement each other very well. Mm -hmm. Coach Harris is a really strong defensive mind. And now the head coach there, he is actually, that's who I work with on a daily basis. Me and him are in the same uh, okay. part of the building. So that's helped me and him build a relationship, relationship. off that's court, cool. off coaching. Yeah. Uh, coach Felix Wilson, uh, another young basketball mind, uh, a really good offensive mind. And the way that he is able to get these kids to trust him and the one-on-ones and the relationships that he's built, like to, to me, Fee, Fee's a future star in this business and uh, I'm glad he's on our staff. And then Coach Kearney Demas coaches our freshmen over there. He, he's doing an excellent job with them as well. And, and I think all of it together, when you put it, you got one of the best staffs yeah. in the state of Kentucky. And, yeah. and we all realize like, hey, we, we may come up short here, yeah. but but together we, we're all huddled together during timeouts. We talk before we go talk to the kids and we're all on the same page. That's I think awesome, that's man. the most important thing in this. The trust, the trust yeah. is on an insane level, man. Um, we got to go on break. Um, when we do get back on break, there, there's some more things that we got to talk about because you're not you're not one dimensional. You got you got a lot of other stuff from Sean Smith that we're going to break down. I mean, sources say podcasts go big blue country. I mean, I can't wait to talk about it when we get back after the break. Ladies and gents, you are listening to WLXU 93.9 FM radio. What's next, Kentucky? And we are back, ladies and gents. You are listening to WLXU 93.9 FM, What's Next Kentucky Radio. Your host, Mario Maitland. I'm joined with a special guest, very special guest, Sean Smith um, from Frederick Douglass, High, Frederick Douglass High School, assistant basketball coach, um, the co-host of Sources Say Podcast, and then the owner of Go Big Blue Country. I mean... What, what, what's next, man? What else do you got in, in the bag, man? But let, let's get right into it. I want to talk to you a little bit about, you know, just having so many of these different, I guess, successful, you know, avenues that you're, you're kind of, you know, navigating through. Uh, I mean, you got your coaching, your, your uh, podcaster, a website owner. How do you balance all three of these? Yeah. The, and be honest. <laughs> it's, it's difficult. I mean, it's, it's difficult. And, uh, I've, <laughs> Honestly, time management was probably the the worst thing about me growing up, and this has kind of forced me to to have to do it. And yeah. uh, it, it's a good balance, though. I, I find a balance with it. And you know, starting the website, the cra the crazy thing about this is I was in my senior year of college, and was going to be a school teacher, which were you really? obviously was wow. fueled by coaching. And okay, so you were gonna teach and then coach on the yep. side. Okay, and you know, I was coaching during that. And when it got down to it. We get down to the semester of student teaching, and I took a chance on myself. I started the website. It took off. I applied for credentials to, to UK oh, yeah. and got approved. So I had to make a decision in July before the final semester of, of my college career, career. As, as a student here to, to have my degree was, do you go finish the degree now or do you chase a dream? And I decided to chase the dream because I felt like that was something in that momentum I could possibly never get back again. So I go all in on media and then come <laughs> full circle, and now I'm working in a school. So doing media, working in a school, school. I'm still coaching. I'm doing all those things. So now you have different – okay. And, different and being in media has given me the platform and the opportunities to, to take my coaching career to another level. How? That's, How, though? So being on Sources Say – and writing about the the game, it gave me a platform to, to maybe show my knowledge of it that I didn't have prior. I'm a better basketball coach today because I write about the game mm -hmm. and I talk about the game because it forced me to know it inside and out. And being on Source to Say with, with Jack and then the opportunity that, that Kentucky Sports Radio has given me there, yeah. Yeah. that has provided me a platform to be known kind of as a basketball mind within the media side. And a lot of people – rely on me they rely on jack to tell them why kentucky's losing close games why kentucky's exactly. having so much success and that's something that i take a lot of pride in but also i take very seriously and uh that has given me a really good opportunity to kind of get out there so me betting on myself that's been my that's been the advice i give every single person now always bet, bet on, on yourself, yourself. Yeah, if you yeah. bet on yourself you'll figure it out for sure man i, I want to dig a little bit deeper i know uh go big blue country you know 
great website that you created. Uh, I really just want to touch base with, like, if we could take it back, you know, take to turn, you know, the tables of time back and, you know, just I really want to ask you, like, how did you, you know, manage to come up with such a successful website at that time? You know, you say you're, you're a senior and was it what is college you it's said? Senior in college. Senior sure. in college. And you're like, was it something out of the blue where you're like, hey, I'm a Kentucky fan. I'm just going to make this website. Or was it something, you know, maybe a game you lost and game Kentucky lost. And you were like, you know what, I'm going to make that. I got something to say. You know, I, I'm yeah. going to put it out there. What was it? it? It came down to me just wanting a place to, to put my thoughts. And I think that's the fans in general. And a lot of people will use Twitter. A lot of people will use social media. And one of my friends, they said, why don't you start a website? And I'm sitting in between classes one morning. And I was like, a website? And so the first one I started looked terrible. I didn't have any knowledge of how that's, to build a website. That's the first one. <laughs> it, I had no I had So I, I'm actually embarrassed of that one. And, and probably the 50 people that read it for a few weeks, you know, thank you. Thank you very much for uh, – <laughs> For continuing to go to that page that pretty much just uh, slowed down because it just had so much content on it at one point, I had to go bigger. But just that opportunity from a from a close friend who's still a close friend of mine today, just giving me that push I needed. Mm. So I take that into coaching here, and it's give these kids the push they need because I had no idea. If you told me 13 years ago when I started coaching that I would be doing this, mm. if you had told me a year ago today. A year ago today, we had just wrapped up my middle school season coaching at H.Y. Livesey Middle School in Harrogate, Tennessee. We had just lost in the Elite Eight of the state tournament. I had no idea it was going to be at Frederick Douglass High School. And then that opportunity comes about maybe two or three weeks later, and here I am living in Lexington, coaching in Lexington, still doing media. And uh, it, side, yeah. where am I a year from now? That's what I the just keep telling scary myself. scary part, but it's a good scary part. It's like it's very fulfilling. It's very promising. You're like – you're you're going through your day at days and you're like man I don't know what's what's in the future for me but I know it's going to be something successful a next a new opportunity a new door yeah. and and enjoying every moment too like don't rush a chapter however long this chapter is where I'm at in the moment like uh, I'm going to get the most out of it and then if an opportunity comes you know down the road we'll we'll look at it but but right now I'm very happy with where I am who I am and, and what I'm doing and I think that's a, a very rewarding feeling to have you said rewarding, so I, I want to keep that train going. I guess what's the ultimate goal in terms of coaching? I know I know we t- touched a little bit about media, but I, I want to, you know, it, it all kind of, you know, correlates with one another. That's what, as far as what I'm noticing with you. Coaching dives a little bit deep into your media. The media can intersect with your coaching. I guess, like, what's the ultimate goal for, for your coaching? Well, the, the ultimate goal here, and the people closest to me, they, they know this. I actually have a uh, text message uh, as my <laughs> wallpaper on my phone. And I've, not- I've noticed that. Yeah, and, yeah. <laughs> and it's a, it's actually, it's a message to my mom and dad. And when I first moved up here, you know, I've, I've always lived close to home and, and my mom and my dad, they're my world and two of my biggest supporters. And they're the reason that I do everything, honestly. And in that message, I told them like this move, it's not been easy moving away from home and, and, and kind of starting fresh in a new area. But I did it because I want to eventually be on a college staff. I want to be in a Division One college basketball program, either analytics, film, director of player development, assistant coach. Like okay. at some point, that's the goal. And every time that my phone goes off, yeah. I see that reminder every single day. So I'm keeping that there until it happens. So that that was a message to them. So. That's what drives me, and that's what fuels me to, to con- continue doing what I'm doing. But uh, along that journey, whatever many pit stops I make, yeah. you'll I'm, just, get there. I'm looking forward to, to whatever there. comes. I guarantee you'll get you, This The thing about this interview, you know what I'll do? <laughs> you know what I'll do? Because I love doing these things. I love interviewing and, and getting to see people's goals and having them manifest their goals. I, I, I have this recording, and this is going to go up on all platforms, ladies and gents, YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts. When you do get that job and you get that college, you know, Division One college basketball coach, I will be sending you this link, and then you're going to rewatch it, and you're going to be like, okay, I was right. Like that, I, I totally, I totally get it. I'm, I'm totally with you. I hope you're. I know you're going to manifest your dreams. I just know. I have a great feeling about it. Um, but I, I want to touch base on one last thing. I guess. Uh, you saying you're moving, you know, from your hometown. Was that a challenge for you, just being able to take that step, you know, from, you know, being away from your parents, being, you know, going to this whole new environment? What, what was that like for you and what made you want to do it? I know you said you wanted to be a coach and obviously that's the next step, but what, 
I guess, like, how do you navigate through that challenge? That's such a big challenge. Well, and, and the biggest challenge of it was is when you're a head coach, you're making all the calls. You're in charge of good. You're in charge of bad. Mm. But taking – and, it's, it, and it, the thing was it wasn't a step back. It wasn't a step down. Being an assistant coach at Frederick Douglass High School is, no, is no, bigger no. than being a head coach exactly. at what I was doing. Exactly. But it's giving up all – and being yes, in, in charge of all of it. So I think that was probably the biggest thing that I had to get used to was being an assistant coach again for the first time in 10 years. But but moving away from home, it was moving away from the comfort, the my close friends that I, I still go home often and visit. It's only two hours, so it's not like it's a, a, a crazy distance. Yeah. But you never truly figure out what you can do until you get uncomfortable. And the moment you get mm. uncomfortable, that's when you find growth. So I, I, never heard I was uncomfortable for a bit. Like I, I moved up here and I kind of just, you know, hit reset and I wanted to see what I could actually do yeah. in this business. And looking back on it now from, from May when I moved up here to, to now, like it's been the right decision to make. Right decision. And uh, I'm very happy with where I'm at and, and what I'm doing and really excited to see where I go from here. I'm happy for you, my man. I, I really am. And I'm excited to see what's going to happen in the future. But I have you here now. So, like, what's coming up next? Do you have any, you know, future plans? Or what's what's coming up next for Sean Smith? Well, hopefully we, we win a lot more basketball games here <laughs> in the next couple of weeks. we got a, we got a tough stretch coming up to get us ready for district play and then, then hopefully regional play and then uh, hopefully making a run back at, at Rupp Arena in the state championship. So, But on the, on the work side of this, with, with sources say – Jack and I have been doing this together since the 2019-20 season, the the season that got canceled due to, to COVID-19, yeah, the Maxie NCAA tournament. And, okay. and we've never had an NCAA tournament run. We've had one NCAA tournament win in that. We've had some low points, the loss to St. Peter's. Uh, Jack Jack scattering report of St. Peter's. If uh, if you're if you're listening to this and you're a source to say listener, you know exactly what I'm talking about. What was his What was his scouting report? So his scouting report was he got to watch shoot around and he said it's a name your score game. Sorry, Jack. I know I'm telling a lot more people about this. He said it's a name your score game. Kentucky's going to win like ninety to fifty, and they lost. <laughs> so we we had to stomach. Come that on, one. Jack. <laughs> no, Jack. Jack and I we've we've uh, we've got a lot of laughs out of that. But he he texts me recently. And he said, man, I, I hope that this thing goes to Phoenix this year because we, we want an NCAA tournament run together on the show. That'd be cool. We want our fans and our listeners to go on that ride with us, and I think that's probably what, I'm, what I hope comes next. Man, what a, what a journey, man. I'm, I wish the best for you guys, honestly. Big fan of Sources Say Podcast and, and Go Big Blue Country. And, and you know, I, I like watching those those guys over there at Frederick Douglass High School. Ladies and gents, make sure you go check out a game, you know, and, and, and check out his, you know, Sources Say Podcast. Uh, you got Go Big Blue Country as well. You guys make sure you go check that out. Um, thank you, Sean, for coming on this show and being able to, you know, share your time with us, you know, you know, give us your, 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 you know, spiel of, of, of your background of, of your whole entire journey, man. It's been an honor just to listen to you. That's all we got for today. Uh, make sure you guys hit that like and subscribe button. Follow us on all social media accounts. And we'll be coming with a, another episode of What's Next Kentucky Radio um, next week. So stay tuned.